Hello guys, Craig from Fix It Fellows, and I am once again in the garage, and I will soon be out there on this. This is my everyday job. I am a London cab driver, if you haven't managed to work that out uh, from previous videos. And I drive this, this is a Vito taxi. These have been on the road since 2008. Uh, in 2008, TfL, who are the regulators of uh, London taxis, dictated that any newly uh, commissioned vehicle for London must have electric sliding doors. Hence, the veto was taken by a company, I think it was Penzo, and they adapted it to meet all the stringent requirements of a London taxi. Now, one of those requirements is that it has to turn within a certain amount of feet. Now, I can't quote you the number of feet, but Trust me, it's pretty tight, and it makes London taxis extremely manoeuvrable. And in order for this vehicle to meet those requirements, Penzo's developed a rear wheel steering mechanism. Uh, it's not directly linked to the steering wheel um, in so much as that it's electronically controlled. There are two actuators, one on each wheel, and the locking pin is actually a solenoid. So an electronic, electric current is applied to a coil that creates electromagnetism and it pulls a pin up. The pin that gets pulled up then allows a dog tooth, which holds the hub in place, to be pushed out of the way when the actuator pushes the hub. Um, so what tends to happen on these, because everything is hung from the underside of the vehicle and it's in the UK, uh, we get a lot of inclement weather, a lot of rain, um, so a lot of weathering occurs on all these mechanisms and the dog tooth becomes jammed. The solenoid usually manages to pull the pin out, that's fine, but the dog tooth gets uh, jammed in position. So when the actuator is, is uh, activated, um, there's, a, there's more resistance than the onboard computer would normally allow and it then quits the process of turning the wheels. So you, you push in the button on the dashboard, um, but nothing will happen because of safe, safety mechanisms within the system. So it's too much, too much um, ampage is being drawn, there must be a problem, shut down. So anyway, today I'm gonna get um, both of these rear wheels off. We're gonna get in there and give uh, all that locking mechanism a service, and it will be good for the next three or four months. And that's generally speaking what I find that you have to do it every three or four months. So let's get on with it. Okay, so here we are, we're at the wheel, or rather, we've taken the wheel off, we're at the hub. Okay, so what we've got going on here is this hub is pivoted down low, down here. We have this rod here coming through here, that is linked to the actuator, which is this unit here. Okay, at the back, we have this box uh, formation. Inside here is the solenoid and the lock pin. Okay, so there is a cable there that supplies 12 volts to the solenoid. That runs off there to a connection here. And then on the side of the box, just here, there is a switch. That switch tells the onboard computer whether the locking pin has been pulled in or out of place by the solenoid. Okay, and then finally at the bottom you have a back plate with two bolts on it, behind which is a spring, and the spring pushes against the dog tooth, which goes into this hub mechanism here. This is the pivot point. So if the dog tooth is pushed in, this can't rotate. If the dog tooth is pulled out, the actuator there can rotate the hub. So what I find is, is that this area here needs working on in order to clean that dog tooth. So what we need to do is, we need to brush away any of the dirt that's sitting on top of the solenoid unit. Okay, so we wanna try and limit the amount of dust that's getting inside, so just give that a brush off and that exposes four hex bolts and we can undo those and get in there. I've brushed it off and then let's now get this cap off. Okay, so just before we get into opening up the solenoid locking area, we are actually gonna 
disconnect the uh, actuator arm there from the hub that will take any pressure off of the hub and the um, dog tooth uh, will allow, allow us to get it out a bit easier so okay you've got a mounting point here you just need to put a uh, torx bit through to lock, a, lock the spine in place and then using a 19mm uh, spanner undo the bolt so here we are the bolts off um, this fitting here is a tapered joint so even undoing the bolt it's still in there quite firmly so we've got to knock it through don't hit the head of this with a hammer because you'll uh, burr off the top and you won't get the nut back on so you want to put a punch down into the Torx, uh, torx hole opening torx bit opening and then just attack it through like that. okay so we've just loosened that up enough to give the hub a little bit of anyway um, if needs be we can go to the other end of the actuator and release the actuator from there if you don't get enough slack here but that should be enough now to allow us to get the locking pins out so now we take out the four top allen key bolts Okay, now we can lift off the lid of the solenoid. And watch out, there is a little spring there that sits in the lid in a little recess. Okay, so don't lose that. And there is the solenoid, okay? So that can stay there out of the way for the moment. And then that gives us access to the locking pin. Okay, so I shall pull that out. There you are, you have a white nylon collar, a spring, and then you have this pin. So you can give that a clean up and a re-grease. So we'll put that to the sides. So here we are looking down into where the solenoid lives. Um, at the very bottom there, that is the top of the dog tooth that we want to take out. You can also see protruding from the side of that opening, there's a little ball bearing. That is the ball bearing attached to the switch on the side of the unit there okay so when that either that's in or out that is telling the onboard computer the state of play of the steering and that ball bearing sits in that recess ordinarily so when the ball bearings out the computer believes that the hub is locked when this plunger is pulled up the ball bearing is pushed inwards by the fact that this part of the shaft is fatter that tells the onboard computer that the pin has been pulled out and that the system can be activated sometimes if you're getting error messages on the led indicator on the dashboard the plug one of these plugs here that goes to the switch on the side of this mechanism maybe one of the wires has come loose inside there Okay, it's only two wires, so it's like an open or closed situation. So if you're getting error messages, um, it's good to check the pins in there and the wiring. For worst case scenario, cut out the plugs, put new plugs in, or hardwire it, however you see fit. But that's that. Okay, so we're back directly underneath the vehicle, and this is the actuator for the driver's side. Okay, I'm actually going to completely remove it so as to be able to give the hub complete freedom of movement. Um, so at this end, there's just a bolt that passes down through there to a nut underneath. So I've just put a 10mm Allen key in the top to hold the bolt in place whilst I use a 21mm spanner on the bottom there to knock that nut out and then the bolt can be pushed through and then the whole actuator can be taken out pulling the kind of push rod out through from the suspension arm there. Now the actuator does have two power leads going to it on the left here and on the right. The one on the left here is purely for power, it goes to that plug there, you can see it moving with the wire, that one there. Okay so 12 volts gets provided to this unit 
to either push the uh, sort of steering arm out or in. This wire here is a multi-cord cable that goes off to the onboard computer and tells the onboard computer at what stage the steering is at. Okay, so if needs be, you can disconnect that plug there, and if you wanted to, you could power this unit directly from a 12 volt supply just by applying it to the pins. You know, positive would push the rod out, maybe, or negative would push the rod out, whichever way it is, but you just reverse the polarity depending on which way you want to do it. Also, on the side of the unit round here, just out of shot, there's a little rubber bung through which you can pass an Allen key um, best attached to a drill so you can manually wind this mechanism if need, needed to be done. Okay, the other thing with these units is, is that over time water gets into them. Now personally I found that the biggest danger of water going in is this wiring here and here. As you can see the wiring comes from above and goes down. There is no drip loop. As a consequence, all the rainwater and road water gets channeled onto this cable and it's channeled straight down to this grommet here. Now over time, that grommet will not be able to resist the intake of water. Water will get into here and it fries the circuitry inside here and then you are into a whole heap of trouble. So, what I've done many moons ago is I applied tie straps here, right by the gland on both cables, uh, maybe not that one, sorry, on that one there, particularly because of the routing of the cable. So any water that goes onto this cable, okay, meets this tie strap and the vast majority of water is uh, expelled off before it meets the gland. I couldn't recommend that highly enough, that has saved these units. I've also done the one on that side, you can see the tie strap there. So anyway, let's get this off. So I've got the 10mm Allen key up there and the 21mm on the bolt. Let's undo that. There we go, bolt off. And the nut off and then the bolt can be lifted out. like so and then the actuator can just slide forward and I'll leave it resting there okay and it's now out of the way of the hub as you can now see the uh, arm of the actuator is now clear of and the hub. I should now be able to rotate the hub okay so it rotates that way quite easily but this way, there's definitely more resistance. Right, let's get this back plate off. 10 mil bolts. Okay, so that back plate's off. There's a gasket in there and a heavy spring. Clean as much of the debris and dirt off as you can. Uh, definitely give it a clean up before you reinstall it. Okay, so there is the back of the pin. If I move the hub now, you'll see that the dog tooth has just appeared. Before we can take the dog tooth completely out of there, we need to remove this bolt, which is a pin that stops that from coming right away out. So that just unscrews with an Allen key. Okay, so it's a 6mm hex Allen key there. Unfortunately, they use quite a few different size hex bolts on all this different setup down here, which is a bit annoying. Anyway, that just undoes. And pulls out, okay? So put that somewhere safe. And now we should be able to pull out the dog tooth. There we go. Out it comes. And that is it. Okay, so here I've just put the dog tooth into some white spirit and I'm just going to give it a clean up.
going to do the same with the solenoid pin. And this is the back plate that locks the dog tooth in place. I've just taken the spring off and the little gasket. Be careful with the gasket, be gentle with that. I'm just going to have a little clean inside the hole that the dog tooth goes in. Okay, then I'll wrap some tissue around the screwdriver and clean and dry out in there before applying any more grease. Okay, so this is the dog tooth, okay? This is the end that goes into a notch on the hub itself. This recess here is the, this hole here is the hole into which the solenoid lock pin drops in and out of. Okay, so as the solenoid actuates, activates, it pulls that pin up. Okay, now that pin can slide as it wishes. And then you remember there was the locking pin with the 6mm hex allen key that went through the side of the unit. That goes into this little recess there, so it can only slide as far as that pin would allow. Okay, now what we're looking for is significant burring on this. Um, you'll see there's a bit of burring on the top there where the solenoid is lifted and that slides over it. So make sure there's not too much of a catch on that if there is. Uh, use a file to whip it off. The other significant areas of wear are around this head here because this really is taking most of the strain because as the hub rotates it pushes against that um, and you can see you can see the wear on there. Now you can buy replacement ones of these. I'm just gonna put this in my vise and give it a bit of a file to take any lips off of that that are there. Um, hopefully that will make it a little bit smoother in action okay so that's one side cleaned up just going to spin it round do the other side okay now you can't afford to take too much material off because that will affect how well the unit locks in so at some point or another you will have to replace these Okay, now it's just a case of putting it all back together. I'm going to put some grease on this dog tooth. So smear some around the head there. That will get distributed as you push it in. Smear some on the sides. Put some on your screwdriver. Put it around inside the hole. and then offer it in. Now making sure that that round hole that the locking pin goes in is sticking upwards. Give it a squiggle around, push it in just as, as far as that, and then reinsert the locking thing on the side. to reposition the dog tooth in order to get that to go into position. There we go. Nip that up tight. At this point I'm just going to 
manipulate the hub to make sure it's all still moving all right okay all good let's push that in a bit further and i can feel it's moving all very nice and easily okay so look down the hole and make sure you've got your thing lined up for your solenoid locking pin take your solenoid pin uh, put a bit of grease around the side and then drop it down into the hole okay it will meet a bit of resistance against the uh, pin or ball bearing of the switch but just push it down then drop your spring in then drop your white nylon collar over okay you can then take the solenoid itself making sure that you keep that little spring underneath there offer it down into position and put the four bolts back into place now this is sprung obviously so you have to hold it down offer in one of the hex bolts and then holding it down offering one diagonal to it get them under equal tension like so then you can put the other two diagonal bolts in Just going to try the hub again make sure it's still moving freely and it is okay now we need to put the back plate on here so put your gasket back on place your spring in there put your two bolts through smear some grease over the spring dog tooth has been pushed fully into place with the spring the solenoid pin has dropped into place and now the hub can't be moved we can now reconnect the actuator at both ends okay so the other end of the actuator is all connected on the inboard side so we're just putting the torx bit back through and then we're doing this up Done. Okay, so there's the driver's side rear wheel back on. I'm going to take it for a little test drive, see if the rear wheel steering is working great. If it's still a bit sticky, then I'll do the other side. Okay, but typically I find for me it's the driver's side that gives me the most complaints. Needs be, I do the passenger side, and it's exactly the same process.
But there you go. There is the rear wheel steering on my Mercedes Vito London Taxi. Fixed, I say fixed, uh, serviced. Um, it's working nice and frequently and uh, reliably at the moment. So that should be that way for the next three or four months with a, with a bit of luck. So anyway, yeah, have to do that every three or four months. A lot of drivers actually fear the rear wheel steering so much that they don't use it. And if you don't use it, it seizes up. So it's a bit of a catch-22. Personally, I use it a lot. Um, and you know that's all I have to do to keep the thing maintained and running. The other issue on these cabs as well is the electric step. Um, I have to service that a lot. Um, if anyone's interested, I'm happy to do a, a video on that. Um, but for the time being, thank you very much for tuning in. Please be sure to give me a thumbs up, um, to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to hit the notification bell. And as ever, check out some of my other videos. So for the time being, thanks a lot, and I'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.